Okay, good evening and uh, welcome to our class. While we are waiting for others to join in, we'll start immediately. Okay, so let's um, get our, our lecture material in the screen on the screen so that we can start immediately. Okay, so I believe right now you can see my screen and if you can see my screen we are set to go okay session four which is the final week of our four weeks uh, revision class we'll be learning the topic taxation for specialized businesses Taxation for specialized businesses. Okay, so um, what are specialized businesses? We have taxation of foreign air and sea transport companies. So any foreign, any foreign company that are into air transport or sea transport fall under uh, um, specialized business. Now, we know that Nigerian companies also go into um, air transport and sea transport. We also know that Nigerian companies also engage in insurance business they also engage in cable undertaking but special businesses covers those foreigners those foreign companies that are into this kind of business and so you see now what are the main difference between let me give you for example MTN Nigeria. Okay, just say MTN and Globacom. MTN is into um, telecommunication. Okay, let's say they're into cable undertaking. And Globacom are also doing the same thing. Or let me just say, Another one, um, Nigerian Airways and British Airways. Both are into uh, airline company. But you see, Nigerian Airways is registered in Nigeria and all the global income that Nigerian Airways makes, the one they made in Nigeria, the one they made in Canada, the one they made in Britain, the one they made anywhere are uh, taxed in Nigeria. So it belongs to Nigeria. All right. But British Airways, British Airline, what they, they make in Nigeria alone what they make in nigeria alone is what is being taxed in nigeria and so the two companies fall under two different ways of accounting for tax while nigerian airways fall under company income tax yes but they do what they call double taxation. They fall under what is called the double taxation, such that, let's say, whatever they made from Britain, from Britain, Great Britain, and is brought into Nigeria, the British government would have charged them tax. And if it comes into Nigeria, that thing they made in Britain comes to Nigeria will also be subjected to another tax called the double taxation. Now, the special businesses, the 
is for foreign companies like you know British Airways. What they made in Nigeria, they will take it down there to their own country. And so whatever they made in Nigeria is being charged to tax on specialized business regime under the Company Income Tax Act. So we'll be looking at companies like the British Airways, like the MTNs, that are foreign company. So the key word here is foreign company doing business in Nigeria. This is different from Nigerian companies doing business both in Nigeria and outside. Okay, these are the kind of things to be looking at. So these are the key words you need to note here. Foreign companies doing business in Nigeria. Now, there are two ways we determine how we get their taxable income. How we determine their profit or loss and their taxable income. We have two methods called method one and method two. Now, method one is what is very, very popular in ICANN exam being tested. So method one has to do with adjusted profit ratio and depreciation ratio, okay? Whenever we use method one, it means that the Federal Inland Revenue, which is FIRS, is satisfied that this company, the way they compute their tax is satisfactory to FIRS, is like the way Nigeria uh, charge their own tax. And so they use method one whenever they are satisfied. But if they are not satisfied, they switch to method two. So what are the, what are the, the components of method one? Now in method one, look at what happens. Now, if you are familiar with the term consolidation, consolidation, it means that, okay, let me use example of companies smaller companies consolidating their accounts to a parent company, okay? So maybe there are X, Y, Z company. X is the parent. Y as, and Z are the, the, the subsidiaries. You know, they are going to bring their accounting record, end their account in the same date with the parents, and kind of they are going to merge them together to form one. So the parent is going to be the one to produce the consolidated account. Now this is something that is this something similar with this specialized business. Now mind you, they are foreign companies. And so whatever they made in Nigeria and elsewhere in the world, they are going to repatriate it to their parent country and form a consolidated account. And so what does, how does Nigeria tax whatever is being made in Nigeria? How does Nigeria knows what belongs to, to Nigerians? How is the expenses that are uh, allocated to Nigeria, how is it being determined? So the prof adjusted profit ratio and depreciation ratio will help us do that. And so look at how the story goes. They bring all the income. How do you know Nigerian income? Because that is one thing you should know. How you know Nigerian income is, where did this income originate? <laughs> So we look at origin and not destination. 
Let's give, for example, you bought a plane in Lagos, Nigeria. You bought a ticket and you are going to Britain or you are going to London. Now, because you bought the ticket in Nigeria, the ticket originated from Nigeria, that is a Nigerian income. Now, let's say you, you bought a two-way ticket, a two-way ticket going to London and back. Now, it is only one-way ticket that belongs to Nigeria. The second way ticket does not belong to Nigeria because you are not originating the flight on your return ticket from Nigeria. Okay? All right. It's just like when you are going to uh, a, the bus park, those of us who stay in Lagos, and you know, when you, you enter a bus from the park and those... Um, drivers settle the people in the park. Those people there where they load the car or the bus have made an income. It is not where you are arriving that is making the income, but where you are taking off from. Now let's go to the uh, telecommunication industry. If you make a call with MTN, from Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, and you call London. Now, the number of minutes you spend, how much they charge you is Nigerian income. But if the person use MTN from London to call you in Nigeria, then it is not Nigerian income. So we are looking at origin. So where passengers originate their journey from, where goods originate their journey from, where calls are made from, these determine the income of Nigeria or non-Nigeria. So to we here in Nigeria, we categorize all the incomes into two, Nigerian income, and non-Nigerian income. So they may be having income from 30 different parts of the world. We categorize them as non-Nigerian income. Only Nigerian income are separated because we want to know how to tax this company. So, but apart from Nigerian income and non-Nigerian income, we will sum them together to get what they call global income. This is like consolidating all the incomes, Nigerian income and non-Nigerian income to get consolidated global income. Now we'll look at the expenses globally, not on a group or country by country basis. We'll just look at the expenses globally. And if we look at the expenses globally, we'll less that expenses, allowable expenses, we will less it from the global income. We will less it from the global income to get what they call global profits. So we have your income, which is like your revenue globally, less allowable global expenses will give you your global profits. Now, after getting your global profits, you will now do something called ratio. You'll be looking at what is your ratio of profit to income? That is what we call adjusted profit ratio. So your adjusted profit ratio is your global profit before depreciation or for capital allowance. Global profit all over global income times 100 over one. Now, let me give you an example of how you may remember this. When you are asking for a profit margin, profit margin is all about profit all over sales or revenue times 
So when you say that, okay, your profit margin is 20%, so to speak, that means if you have an income or a revenue of 1,000 Naira, that means 20,000, um, 20, uh, 200 Naira is your profit from 1,000. 200 Naira is your profit. So if 200 Naira is your profit, that means 800 Naira is your expenses, isn't it? That's it. Now, if your profit margin is 20%, then your expenses margin it's going to be 80 percent so now we are not concerned about the expenses now we are concerned about the profit so we say adjusted profit that is what we are looking for adjusted profit because normally we normally adjust our net profit to what is called adjusted profit so when we get our adjusted profit, we look for the ratio of profit to income. After getting that ratio, we normally say that if on a global scale, if on a global scale, let's say the profit ratio is 20% or say 30%, if, okay, let me use, let me be more generous. Let's say the global profit is 40%. The, the ratio is 40%, okay? On a global scale. That would mean that they will have to assume that all the countries that brought income, it's going to take the same ratio. That means that profit ratio is used across board so if the global is 20 that means each individual is 20 so all we need to do is take that 20 percent that you have or 40 percent rather that you have for the global and bring it to the nigerian income when you bring it to the nigerian income find 40% of Nigerian income alone. That is Nigerians adjusted profit. So it is assumed that 60% of Nigerian income went for expenses. And so 40% is their adjusted profit, which they will use. Now, the same thing happens for depreciation. We'll look at how much is the capital allowance or depreciation in lieu of capital allowance. So we'll take that and we'll call it depreciation ratio. We'll look at the global capital allowance or depreciation, if they are satisfied with the depreciation, all over the global income, we are looking at the ratio. So the same thing. Let's say the depreciation ratio is 10%. It means if on a global scale, on a global scale, depreciation ratio is 10%. On the Nigerian scale, it should be 10%. And so now we've gotten our adjusted profit ratio, which we take to our Nigerian income to look for Nigeria accessible profits. Nigerian accessible profits. So first of all, you have to bring your Nigerian income. Those, that one you separated that this is Nigerian income separate from non-Nigerian income. Then you are now going to look for Nigerian accessible profit by multiplying the Nigerian income with the adjusted ratio. So let's say on a global scale, the global scale, they made 1 million Naira uh, uh, as income. And it is 40% that becomes their profit, which is 400,000 Naira. If Nigeria made 100,000 Naira as income, we are still going to use that 40% to multiply Nigeria's 100,000, which means it is 40,000 that will be 
the accessible profits. Then, of course, you will not less your capital allowance. Your capital allowance will not be the depreciation ratio. Let's say it is ten percent on the global scale. We we'll now bring that ten percent to multiply by Nigeria income to get what we use as our depreciation. So all we now do is to say accessible profit minus capital allowance. That will give you what they call your chargeable profit or your total profit. That this is what is being charged to tax. So the main thing with this method here is we try to eliminate every other thing, but bring out three things that are important in the account. The income, the profit, and the capital allowance, so that we can find what is called the total profit. So your income, which is your accessible, your, your income is much important because your income the percentage of your accessible profit, the percentage of your income is your accessible profit. Income is important because a percentage of it is your capital allowance. Now, when you have gotten your total profit, you will now prepare your company income tax because they are under CIT. So, your company income tax will be at the normal 30%. That's fine. But you will always compare it with minimum tax. Minimum tax. Minimum tax is 2% of Nigerian income. So this Nigerian income that you have here, you look for 2%. That will give you your minimum income, a uh, minimum tax. I know what minimum means. That must be the lowest that you can be taxed. So it means that if this minimum income is higher than your CIT, then we will choose the minimum tax. Sorry, I keep calling it minimum income, minimum tax. If your minimum tax is higher than your CIT, you choose minimum tax because that's the minimum. But of course, if your CIT is higher than your minimum tax, you choose CIT because you can't be going to charge a minimum when your normal tax is higher. So you choose the higher of the two. Now, for all companies who are not under the special business re regime, that means if they are all Nigerian companies, they are not under special business. They always pay education tax whenever they pay CIT. But now, in the case of special businesses, they are not Nigerian companies. And so they are not obligated to pay the education tax. So these are the things you should know. Non-Nigerian companies do not pay education tax. Nigerian companies pay education tax. So look at this summary again now. First of all, you look for Nigerian income. Then you look for non-Nigerian income. You add them together to get global income. Then you now look for allowable expenses globally to get what they call your global profit. Now, when you do that, you now look for the adjustments, the adjustment ratio, adjustment, adjusted profit ratio by saying the global profit all over the global income. In some books, you will see worldwide profit all over worldwide income times 100%. Now, you are going to use that adjusted profit to adjust Nigerian income because this is where we want to base it. We are not interested in the global figures. What we are interested in is the ratio 
of profits, the ratio of capital allowance. These are the two things we are interested in and we're bringing it into Nigerian situation to use. So that is how we calculate the adjusted profit ratio. Then we do something similar to depreciation ratio and we say adjusted profit or accessible profit this time around, less capital allowance in lieu of depreciation will give you your total profit, which we also call chargeable profits. Then we look for the company income tax at 30% and compare it with the minimum tax of 2% of Nigerian tax of uh, accessible income. So if you look at it very well, we said uh, education tax is not here. But do you see that minimum tax is using 2%, which is the same figure with education tax. But the difference between minimum tax here is that minimum tax is being charged at Nigerian income. Education tax is being charged at accessible profits. So remember, minimum tax is being used to compare that as a restriction, it's being used to compare the CIT and we don't pay education tax. So now let's see how we fare on exercise 4.1. Now this is the profit and loss account of a foreign airline. So once you see a question that has foreign, you should be thinking of special business. And when you now see airline, just know a special business. Ethiopian Airways Limited. It must always be a company. For year ended March 31, 2003, as follows. Of course, this is going to be at preceding year basis because it's TCIT. Now we look at this income. Income from passengers freight into Nigeria. Now you have to analyze it. This is into Nigeria. That is one thing you should know. Into Nigeria means it did not originate from Nigeria. It arrived at Nigeria. It arrived into Nigeria. This is not a Nigerian income. You come again and say income from goods loaded into aircraft in Nigeria. So these were loaded into the aircraft that was in Nigeria. And so this is a Nigerian income. Then this is income from passengers loaded and flown out of Nigeria. So if they were flown out of Nigeria, it means it's originated from Nigeria. So this is another Nigerian income. Income from goods loaded into aircraft on other routes. No mention was made on, on Nigeria. So this is not a Nigerian income. So Nigerian income is just two, this and this. So these are the two Nigerian income. If we add them together, 220 plus 80, 180 um, is going to give me 400. Global income. That will mean that 800. That will mean that 800 is a non-Nigerian income. 800 is non-Nigerian income. So the global income is 1,200,000. So what we will now do is this. This is your global income, 1,200,000. Nigerian income is 400. So whatever thing, Whatever ratio we apply on this income, we will apply the same ratio on Nigerian income. Now we'll now look at the salaries. So if you can see here, 
there is no mention of Nigeria or non-Nigeria. We see salaries and other expenses. This is uh, assumed to be allowed. Why do we say it is assumed to be allowed? Because salaries are allowable and they now merge it with others. So it is assumed to be allowed, except if the additional information stated otherwise. So 800,000 is likely now an allowable expenses. Depreciation is not allowed. We are gonna be using capital allowance in place of depreciation. Then these are other disallowable expenses. They are stated this is 40,000. So everything here is not allowed. So we have discovered that 40,000 plus 120, which is 160, is not allowed. If 160, for, uh, 160 is not allowed, 800 is allowed. So you see this profit for the year, 240,000 is not a true figure for taxation because some other disallowable expenditures has been reduced, making this profit small. All we need to do is to add them back so that this profit will go up to the normal way it was supposed to be. So note here that we'll add 240, we'll add 40, which will make it 280, we'll add another 120, 400. So it becomes 400. Now let's look at additional information. Okay. The Federal Inland Revenue is satisfied. Once you see the word is satisfied, come under or on top and say method one to be used because method one is used when they are satisfied. Okay. So method one, that the tax authority in Ethiopia computes and assesses tax on similar basis with Nigeria and has received certification of the appropriate ratios. What are the appropriate ratios? It is the APR, adjusted profit ratio. They have received certificate that, yes, we approve of it, and the DR depreciation ratio, they receive agreement. Now, the tax authority has agreed that depreciation charge in the account can be granted in lieu of capital allowance. That means that they agree that whatever you see here as your depreciation, though we are disallowing it at this time, we are going to use it as capital allowance. So they agree with that depreciation that you can use it as capital allowance. Sometimes they may not agree, even though they are satisfied here, which must be stated. They may want to tell you that this, this, this depreciation, we are going to give you capital allowance, which you will use. So in that case, if they give you their own capital allowance, you will, uh, you will use the capital allowance instead of depreciation. You use a capital allowance instead of depreciation. Okay. Then I said salaries and other expenses. You remember when I said salary and other expenses are allowable until additional information let us know. So salaries are of course allowable is the other expenses include deposits for a new VC-10 aircraft. 80,000. So this VC aircraft is not an operational expenditure. An aircraft is an asset. So it is a fixed, a non-current asset is a capital expenditure. And so this 80,000 has to go off from allowable expenses. So this is not allowed. So that means that the 800,000 we have allowed before, we are going to add back. By allowing 800,000, it means we have said, yes, deduct the whole 800,000. But now we are seeing something here. 
18,000 is not supposed to have been deducted. Let's add it back because this, this is not an operational expense, but a capital expense. Now the now said payment of 24,000 to Nigerian Port Authority for the use of the VIP launch by at the Morutala Mohammed Airport of first class airliners. This is not an allowable expenditure. Then payment of twelve thousand as rent for accommodation used as transit flats by the airline crew. Now this is transit, although rent for accommodation is allowable if it is for Nigerian income. But any income that is made as transit does not belong to Nigeria. Okay, let's say, for example, uh, a flight is coming from London and is heading for, let's say, Ghana or South Africa, and they have a brief stop at Nigeria, and they now stay in Nigeria, and now the next day they now continue the journey. Because they stopped at Nigeria and started another journey, this is not a new journey, it's a continuation. So Nigeria is just a transit. So that 12,000 other days spent will be refunded to them. The parent company will bear it. So this is not an allowable expenditure. So it has to be deducted. It has to be added back rather to your profit because it has been deducted among the 800,000. So one thing I should let you know is when they are analyzing expenses and salaries, and when they say include everything they gave you that includes, those ones need adjustment. Because if you look at it, 80 plus 24 is 120, um, 124, 124 plus 12 is 136. 136 is far less than 800,000. But when you see the word comprise, when you see the word comprise instead of include, when this is changed to comprise, it means they will bring the breakdown of the whole 800,000. So you will see everything they will give. If you add them up, it will give you 800,000. So it is now you who will now use your sense to start checking which one of them is allowable and which ones are not allowable so always pray they give you include and not comprise because when they give you include they want you to adjust everything if they give you comprise they are testing your knowledge to know which one of them you think is allowable which one is not allowable required Compute the one total profits. So, this is what they are asking you total profits for Nigerian tax purposes. So, first of all, before you get total profit for Nigerian tax purposes, you would have gotten your total profit for global, your total profit or yeah, your global profit, which you are going to adjust to become Nigerian profit. So how do we solve that? Now look at the solution here. Yeah? Now, if you remember that our net profit, we are starting from down to up. You can also start from up to down. You will get the same thing. Depending on, if you are starting from up to down, that will mean that you will start from global income and go down in any way it depends on which one has more adjustments the one that have fewer adjustments is what you should use normally i prefer people starting from 
down and go up. Okay. Now look at the net profit you were giving, 240. Now we'll add back all those expenses that were not allowed. The first one is depreciation. We said depreciation should not be added at this time because we have capital allowance, which is 120. Okay. Now remember the salaries and other expenses we have uh, deposit for a new VC crop, which is 80,000 payment to Nigerian Port Authority for the use of the VIP launch, 24,000, and the payment of rent for accommodation used as transit, I explained that, 12,000. Then we also have the other disallowable expenses that was stated, 40,000. So when you add all of these to your net profit, that will mean that your profit has been adjusted from 240, which was a smaller figure, misleading, to 516,000. So this is your global adjusted profit. Now, what is your global income? Your global income is this figure, 1,200,000. So all you now need to do is to look for your adjusted profit ratio. What is adjusted profit ratio? Look at the formula. Global adjusted profit, which is 516,000, divided by your global income, which is 1,200,000 times 100. So it means that your profit, your adjusted profit of 516, is 43% of your income. So it means that Nigeria should adjust their own income by 43% to get their profit, accessible profit. That is what it means. Now we'll do the same thing for depreciation ratio because they ratified your depreciation. They said that they were giving you the depreciation in lieu of capital allowance so you see it here global sorry this should be global depreciation sorry this should be global depreciation so you you correct it in your book global depreciation so that is it here global depreciation divided by global income multiplied by hundred thousand so it gives you ten percent it means that 10% of your Nigerian income should be, uh, should be used for depreciation. So now you've gotten your ratios. So we said before that these are the two things that we want to take away from the global, from the global calculation. So these ones were possible due to the global calculation. These are the two things we want to take from the global calculation. And now we want to do your Nigerian income. Now look at the Nigerian income. We said before that income from goods loaded into aircraft in Nigeria, remember, 220, and income from passengers loaded and flown out of Nigeria, 180. So the total of Nigerian income is 400. So that's fine. So how do we get Nigerian adjusted profit? All we simply do is to bring your 43% APR adjusted profit ratio and multiply by this 400. So it means that 172 is your Nigerian adjusted profit. So 172,000 is 43% of 400. The same way with the capital allowance, 40,000 is 10% of 400. So we are less than 40,000 from 172 and Nigerian total profit is going to give me 132,000. So this is the Nigerian total profit, 132,000. Now the next question here says, the income tax payable by airline by the airline for 
assessment year 2004. So you see here that the account ends in March 2003. And we said it's a preceding year basis. So that means the assessment year is 2004, as stated here. So we go down to the question and go to the B part, and you say the income tax, 30% of your Nigerian total profit gives you this figure. Now you now do your minimum tax. Minimum tax is 2% of your Nigerian income, which is 8,000. So which of them is higher? The CIT. So this is the tax they are going to pay. So that is just the answer to the B part of the question. So everything you are looking in special business, be it airline, be it cable undertaking, be it sea transport, all of them will have this kind of format where you will have Nigerian income, non-Nigerian income to get global income, where you now have to look for the two ratios, the adjusted profit ratio, the depreciation ratio, which you now also apply to Nigerian income to get Nigerian total profits. You'll also be looking at the comparison between the CIT and the minimum tax, and you'll be choosing the higher of the two. These are the general things you see whenever the FIROS is satisfied that the ratios and the accounting system is uh, is not materially different from that of Nigeria. Okay, we will we'll now go to the method two. In method two, in method two here, this is used where the FIRS is not satisfied on the conditions listed in method one. Now, under this method, the FROS have the discretionary power to determine profits derived from Nigeria. Not by the use of, um, not by the use of, um, what do they call it? Not by the use of APR. Not by the use of APR. But by applying their own percentage, which they call a fair percentage of the full sum of Nigerian income. So once again, you will have to do something called the Nigerian income, as we did in method one, the non-Nigerian income, as we did in method one, you will now get your global income, as we did in method one. Then, when we do that, we are not concerned about the global profits. We're only concerned about the global income. Now, because we are not concerned about the global profits, we are not concerned about the APR, neither are we concerned about the depreciation ratio. We are not concerned. What we are concerned here is the FROS has a percentage that they want to apply by themselves. So they are ignoring the, so it means that they have not rectified or satisfied or given certificates on the ratios. So if they have not given certificates on the ratios, we can't use it. We use what the FROS has given. So in place of maybe 43% that we did in the first example, FROS say, no, our fair percentage is perhaps 40% or perhaps 45%, let's say 45%. So that is what you will use as your percentage for Nigerian income. And they can say, okay, capital allowances agreed for Nigeria, maybe is 8% or maybe 12%. That is exactly what you use for your 
capital allowance instead of your depreciation ratio. So this is the two method. Now, when you are giving point number two, the foreign company has a right to ask the FRS to make a revised computation based on method one. They have a right to ask the FIRS to make a revised computation based on method one. And the company will choose the lower one. Okay? So they will choose the lower one, just as when you are doing um, commencement rule and you use what they call rights of election. So this is their own rights of election. So you say we, you, you don't like method one, you have to still do it. And if method one gives us the best results, we will take it. So you see why method one is mainly used in the exam because in real life, the FRS will still do method one. Now, this request will only be valid if the company made it six years after the end of that relevant year to which it is in question. Then they will have to get a certificate to the satisfaction of the revenue and all of that other things here that is being said. So we now come to taxation of foreign company engaged in the cable undertaking, which is the telecommunication. So we've seen the airline business, and I tell you, it is not materially different from that of telecommunication. So these are the two major things you will be seeing in your special businesses. So, so one of them does always be coming to your mind. The for airline business be thinking about British Airways. They are foreign company. Then for telecommunication, the thinking of MTN. Okay, so now let's look at um, exercise four point two because we said apart from the above, all other provisions relating to tax companies, taxation of companies engaged in the C transport companies exactly applies the same way to companies engaging cable undertaking so there are the same thing we are it's like we are doing a second example to reinforce what we said okay now look at this example here 4.2 ultimate nigerian limited is a canadian foreign company so this one is giving it away that this is a special business. Now you now see engaged in cable undertaking is the second thing in Nigeria. Fine. So it's a foreign company doing business in Nigeria. Its worldwide management account, that's fine, it's worldwide. For the year ended September 2002, preceding year basis, tax year should be 2003, revealed the following. Now let's see if we can identify the, okay. I want you to look at this income and on the chat room, give me the Nigerian income. So I'll give you one minute to give me in the chat room, which one is Nigerian income. So I'm waiting so that I will know if we are following. Give me the figure for Nigerian income. Just the figure. Your time is has started. Okay, somebody has brought the figure. I'm waiting for the second person. Okay, thank you so much. In your figures, I noticed that two of you have 
one figure in common. And that one figure you have in common is 100,000. And that is your Nigerian income. I told you that we look for the word origin and not destination. So if you have chosen 200, it means that's wrong. It means this one terminates in Nigeria. So if something terminates in Nigeria, the call did not originate from Nigeria. So if the call or cable message terminates in Nigeria, it must from from it must have been from outside. So it is not originating in Nigeria, does not belong to Nigeria. Now it is routed through Nigeria. This is in transit, routed through Nigeria. It is in transit. It means that the destination is not Nigeria. The originates, it originates outside Nigeria. The destination is not Nigeria, but it's passing through Nigeria. Doesn't belong to Nigeria. So the only thing here is originating in Nigeria. So 100,000 is your uh, Nigerian income. That's the only Nigerian income. That means that 350 is non-Nigerian income. Okay? So this is your global income. So look at your salaries. Can you look at these expenditures and give me the ones that are disallowable. Give me the disallowable expenditures. Look at the notes too. Look at the notes. And I just want to, you to give me figures that are disallowed. You have one minute to do that. I'm waiting for your answers. Okay, someone has dropped his, drop has. Okay. Remain the second person. Please always be putting comma in your answers so, so that 90,000 will not look like 900,000 to me. Okay, both of you have dropped your answers and both of you dropped the same thing and both of you are correct. 90,000, which is depreciation is not allowed. Purchase of equipment is also not allowed. I also told you to look at the notes and you've, had, you've refused to look at the notes. We are seeing a disallowable item totaling 23 million. So 23,000 should also be included here. So there are three things that should be added back. This overhead expenses that has 85,000 will remove 23,000 out of it as disallowed. So we have three things. We have 90, we have 39, and out of here we have 23. So these are the three things. Now look at the notes again. FROS is satisfied. So this is the keyword, satisfied. Note method one should be used. So, and the next thing is, has satisfied the adjusted profits and ratio allowance. So first of all, they need to satisfy that it is on the same basis, they not also they need to be satisfied. They also has to satisfy the ratio. If they don't satisfy the ratio, you can't use it. So these are the two key language you know that you are doing the, the method one. Now we are told to compute the company's adjusted profit. Now, when they say the company's adjusted profit, it means that is a worldwide company, not just Nigeria. So what do we do here? 
what do we do here? Okay. Okay, so let's go back here. What do we do here? Now look at the net profit that was given to us here, which is how much? 56,000, this is actually 56 million. We we'll bring it here. Then can you see those three disallowable expenses? I told you depreciation, that uh, expenses that was disallowed, 23 million, and your 39 million you brought. You add them up together, you add them to be 152. When you add it with this 56 million, you have 208 million as your global adjusted profit. So this is the company's adjusted profit. That's step one. You've done that. The B part says determine the adjusted profit ratio and depreciation ratio. It's so simple. All you need to do, you've gotten one element of calculating it, your adjusted profit. What you now need to do is to calculate your global income. So it is easy to get a global income here, just a copy and paste of everything, 450 here, and that's 450 here. Okay, so after getting your global income, you start doing that magic we did. We will now say global adjusted profit, which was 280, 208 divided by global income of 450 times 100. You are having 46.22%. Feel free to use decimal up to two or three decimal if you wish. Then when you do your depreciation ratio, it's your global, sorry, it's still a mistake, global depreciation. Pardon me, global depreciation divided by global income. The global depreciation, look at that depreciation you added back the 90,000, you are now using it, divided by 450 times 100, 20%. I believe we know how to use those ratios from the last example. And now we are told to compute total profits and income tax payable in Nigeria. So we cannot be going to find tax for other companies, for other countries. We only need Nigerian tax because that's what we are taxing them. And so for we to get Nigerian tax, we need Nigerian total profit. So what do we do? We simply come here and say Nigerian profit and Nigerian income is only the income from cable messaging originating in Nigeria. We said it was 100,000, you remember. Fine. Now, Nigerian adjusted profit. All you now need to do is the adjusted ratio multiplied by this 100,000, you have 46 to 20. Then the capital allowance will be this depreciation ratio, 20% times Nigerian income, which will give you 20,000. So when you less it from the adjusted profit, this is the Nigerian total profits. Now, it remains to calculate the tax. Now, the tax is, the income tax is 30% of your total profits, which is 30% of 26,220, you have 7,866. Minimum tax is 2% of your Nigerian income, which is 2,000, you choose the higher of the two. This is the answer. So you can see that it's so easy when it comes to special business. All you need to do is to look for the keywords that show that it's special business. One, it must be a foreign company doing business in Nigeria. Two, what kind of businesses are they doing? So you look at all those businesses that are covered in the specialized business. We have the airline company, we have the uh, sea transport company, 
we have the cable undertaking, we have insurance business for it, we have um, unit and trusts, we have, um, okay, let me see if I can get those companies that are involved in the special businesses. So they are all listed here. They're all listed here. We have uh, units and trust here. Units and trust, insurance business, cable undertaking, air and sea. Okay. So they are all the companies that are listed in the cable on them um, in the specialized business. So when you find a foreign company in that area, you have identified one thing. Then secondly, you just have to determine which is Nigerian income. If you cannot determine Nigerian income, then there is no need doing it because you cannot tax it because they didn't make anything from Nigeria. So you have to determine at least one Nigerian income. The key word is originating. After determining Nigerian income, you look for the global income. Then you look at the global adjusted ratio, the adjusted ratio and the depreciation ratio. Look at uh, global income and less the expenditures to get global profit. Sorry, when you now look at FRS satisfying that they are okay with the accounting or taxation pr practice and they satisfy the ratios, now look for those ratios, APRO and DRO. And you now take those ratios and plug it into Nigerian business. So you now bring back your Nigerian profits and your Nigerian income, rather, you adjust it to Nigerian adjusted profits using your APRO. You now also get your capital allowance and deduct it you have your total profit from which you can charge your CIT, which you will compare with your minimum tax and you choose the lower. That is for method one. Method two, you now use a fair percentage as given by FRS. FRS will detect the base. I think that is all for specialized business. So, I think um, you do well. Let me see if there are um, past question on um, special businesses that you may want to look at. Um, let me see if there are past question on special business you may want to look at. Okay. See, okay, sorry, this here. Let me go to the next page. Okay, this is taxation. So, I'll be writing it here now. We have um, November. 2014, question number five. I've sent one of them you should practice. November 2014, question number five. Let me see another, if I can see another example. Let's see if we have another example from past questions here. So you see, if we cannot see another example here, it shows that it's been long 
that they set special businesses. So don't be surprised that special businesses may feature. Let me still check in final level if there is a special business because there is nothing wrong in going to go and get your practice session from the final level. Let's see if there is. Okay, now I will also ask you to go to advanced tax. I wrote it advanced tax, November 2017, question six. So November 2017, question six. So you can just go there and just solve only that. Okay, we also have advanced tax again. Advanced tax, um, May 2018, question number six. So the, the one of November is telecommunication, the one of May is airline. So don't be looking at it that this is uh, advanced tax. It is the same thing you are learning here that is the same thing that they are doing. So in case you miss it now in your exam here, you may not miss it then. So sometimes it's good to go there and go and, uh, and test it. So you see, it has been tested almost recently in advanced tax, maybe tested in, uh, in taxation. So these are the three examples I want you to go and, and look at and try your hands on them so that you can be proficient. I believe we have no question. So if we have a question, let's take some four, the remaining four minutes to make it 8.30 here, Nigerian time, to ask those questions. Otherwise, if there's no question for the moment, you may need to chew over what we've just studied and ask any question in the WhatsApp group based on what we've learned today or what we've learned previously. Though our revision class may be ending this week, we are not leaving you alone. We are still going to be with you you are staying in that revision class group, you are still going to be with us and we will guide you accordingly. We will guide you accordingly to, to you write your exams. So feel free to discuss with us, tell us anything that is of concern to you. And I prefer that we always practice, 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 practice. Always practice. When you practice, you are going to be more proficient in the questions and answers. So if there is no question for the moment, we'll say goodbye today for our class. See you again when you have questions in the WhatsApp class. I think the next class, the next taxation class will be on Thursday taken by my colleague and uh, she will have something more to give to you. So thank you so much for having a nice time with me. Thank you too for enjoying the class. I enjoyed the class too. Thank you so much and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right.